Happy Monday to you, everyone. Hope you had a great weekend, and I hope you're ready to get started with this week because we've got a lot to cover this week. As you can probably tell already just over the last couple of videos, I've started on this little mini-series using lessons from survival, survival lessons, survival rules, and applying those to our everyday dog ownership lives, whether we're caring for our dogs or we're training our dogs. These are powerful lessons. So make sure you pay attention because remember, the life you save may be your own. All right, let's get started. So the last couple of days, we talked about the combat rule of three. Pay attention to anomalies that occur in quick succession. And when that happens, make sure you change whatever you're doing without hesitation. We also talked about the rule of 70%. Don't get caught through paralysis by analysis because you're stuck. You're like a deer caught in the headlights. You can't even make a decision. You're just paralyzed. Don't let that happen. And during many situations in life, 70% of something is good enough. You can get to that 100% later on, but 70% will get you through any sort of training problems that you're having and also behavioral issues and any issues you may be having as well. So today I want to focus on the rule of cool. No, not that cool. I know what you're thinking. Give to me that. There you go. No, I'm being more serious. I'm talking about keeping your cool. In the military, we used to call it slaying the dragon. Yeah, whenever you feel this panic starting to well up, it's like a dragon crawling up your spine and then latches up onto the back of your neck. Oh, geez, I can still think of several moments in which that happened to me. Wow, I think I just got goosebumps. It's slaying the dragon, keeping your cool. And you have to, you have to do this because slaying the dragon or keeping your cool, obeying the rule of cool, can turn a situation from where you are ready to respond to a worthless state called lockup or frozen. And that can lead to the difference between death for you or your dog or a close call. You gotta keep your cool. And that can be hard to do because your stress response, fight or flight. Man, whenever you get in one of those situations, your body just wants to take over. It wants to send all that blood and everything from your skin and your brain down to your muscles, whether your legs so you can run away from something or your fist so you can fight something and survive it. You get tunnel vision. All sorts of things occur at that moment, and it can be very difficult to work your way through it. And we deal with many situations like that as dog owners on this planet. I mean, my gosh, I think I've lived through most of ones. I'm just going to uh, use an example for you. One is when our dogs just run away from us, when they suddenly get loose, when all of a sudden, snap, and that good old leash you paid a lot of money for suddenly breaks. Or you look down and you go, oh no, the collar just came off. Or someone left the gate open, or the front door open, or what have you. But there goes your dog and is headed quickly to the next county. So many of us are worried about our, losing our dogs, about them running away, getting lost forever, or being hit by a car. And there we go, we panic. And instead of going with your dog, meaning you're just kind of casually moving along and you know got the old ball maybe handy by the door or something like that, just moving with your dog. In a situation like that, when your dog is running away from you, don't run after it, don't run. Uh, and it, you start screaming, come back, oh, God! And it's all screaming, oh no. Now you can actually scare your dog away from you. You can actually propel your dog in front of that car that it would have avoided over the edge of that ravine. It can become lost. Go with your dog. Remember they have latent learning? I told you about that before. Go back and watch some of these videos. I should have given you enough information by now to give your dog the credit it deserves. It can find its way home. It can. I mean, there was a situation one time when Kira and I were walking a trail with the captain. He was off leash. Heck, it, we thought it was only us and the entire mountain range. Well, lo and behold, it wasn't. There was some trail runner with a hoodie up over his head. The captain was much younger back then. And that was it. When captain saw this guy, he bolted. He was gone. And I do mean gone. Well, he'd never been on that trail. The trail just happens to be near my in-law's house. And he found his way all the way back. Here we are, we're, we're moving with him. Like I'm telling you right now, we're calling, Captain, hey buddy, we got a ball over here, got a handy dandy tree. Just casually moving along, fighting that panic, slaying that dragon. And next thing you know, the phone rings and goes, hey, uh, K, 
Captain's back here at the house. Where are you guys? So make sure you give your dog more credit than what you typically do. They, they can. They're very good at navigation. So therefore, don't panic. Go with your dog. Try to remain within range, but don't panic. Dog fights. Oh my gosh, they look and sound horrible. Much worse than what they really are. Pay attention to my previous videos on how to break up a dog fight. How to do that. A dog attack. You're attacked by a dog. Oh, don't you dare panic. And I know that's difficult. I've been there. I know it's difficult. But cover up. Curl up and cover up, baby. Get down that fetal position. Curl up nice and tight. Cover up. And you will survive that moment. You'll survive. No serial killer dogs out there intent on murdering you. No, if they attacked you, they had cause. Take that cause away from them. A house fire. I've shown you videos on that. A client of mine, a good friend of mine, half his house burned up because his good old doodle set his house on fire by jumping up on top of a gas stove and it lit the darn thing and there goes the whole house. Um, don't panic in that either. House fires, most people die and succumb to those uh, either through smoke inhalation or they panic. Here's a little rule I want you to kind of remember. If you have a dog in your house, they can find the way out of the house easier than you can. They're much better at it. They can find those little cracks. That, that's where the fire's not burning at this moment. You might not be able to tell by the smoke, but a dog certainly can. You're ever in a fire, follow your dog out of the house. Follow him out. Use any words you had. Hey, want to go potty? Yeah. <laughs> I said, go, you seriously, Brian? The house is burned down. He goes to tell your dog to go potty. It works. Do it. Follow the dog out of the house. Smart animals that they are. And then what about if your dog falls in your pool? You have a pool. We have a pool at our house. What if the dog falls in? Captain's fallen in three times. You think he'd get it that first time, at least the second time, but no, the third time he went in. Don't panic. Okay, first of all, dogs do have the fundamental ability to swim. They can swim some, maybe not very good. It's not gonna make the Olympic trials doing it, but they can usually latch onto a side long enough for you to calmly and carefully extract your dog from the pool. Don't panic. 1.2 million people drown every single year worldwide. 5,000 pets drown per year in the U.S. But here's the kicker. Three times as many of those people, people die trying to save their pets. So make sure, you know, the dog can swim. They're, they're born already know how to swim just a little bit. But can you? And can you at that moment? Man, look up the statistics yourself. Go, you, you'll be amazed how many people drown trying to save their pet, whether it be in a, the pool, which is where 20% of all drownings occur, is in the family pool. Outside of that is people that have drowned trying to save their dogs in a frozen hole at the lake. The dog went right through the ice. Dogs clinging to the side of the ice. And how many people have drowned trying to save animals from that cold and very quick death? It, yeah, it happens. People will jump out of boats to save dogs and they get hit by the boat. Don't panic. Okay, the rule of cool. So here's a couple things I want you to do and add this to your repertoire because that means everything when you come up these situations. Kind of like fight like you train, train like you fight. It, it, that's all part of it. Make sure you're ready to go. So here's a couple, three little tips for you guys. Number one, practice combat breathing. You're not always going to be in a situation, but if you have one of those slow evolving situations where you feel yourself starting to panic, practice combat breathing. And what that is, is where you inhale for four seconds and then spend four seconds exhaling. To do that will immediately start to lower your stress response, that physiological reaction to that fear, to that panic. Slow the heart rate down, slow the breathing down. Plus it's a bit of a cognitive shift. You're actually having to think about counting to four all the way in and four all the way out. And you can be doing that while you're walking with your dog who's running away from you. I'm breathing, combat breathing like Brian said, combat breathing. You practice it. Practice it on a daily basis. Do it several times a day while you're sitting at your desk anything because we humans we humans have the ability unlike our dogs to activate our stress response from a mere thought you just gotta think about something that can go 
Practice combat breathing. Next thing, emergency conditioning. What is emergency conditioning? That's where you play a movie in your head. You visualize, you create a movie, write the whole script, hire the actors, you do the whole thing in your head on every one of those scenarios I talked about. Imagine, visualize your house on fire. Think about it. Close your eyes, think about what it would smell like. The sounds, the flames, getting burned. Think about it, make a movie in your head. Same thing with the drowning. Same thing with the dog running off. Same thing with you being attacked by a dog or your dog in a dog fight. All of these scenarios and many, many more. Play a movie in your head because here's the neat thing about it. You now have an actual experience. At least your brain thinks so. Yeah, you visualize it. You're there. And so when the real thing goes down, you don't panic as much because you have experience to draw from. That's at least what the brain thinks. We did this all the time in the military, and I was raised doing this by my mentor. We did it all the time, even before we dared embark on anything dangerous. We paused for a moment, sat down, and he made me close my eyes and draw up the worst case scenarios. What can happen and what are you going to do? Make you feel it if it's something like you, you, you twist your ankle. I mean, you're out in the wild long enough, I'll tell you what, it's not a matter if you're going to twist your ankle, it's just simply a matter of when and how badly it's gonna happen. So bad things are gonna happen if you spend enough time in the wild. Visualize these things, think about it, live it, breathe it. So when the real deal goes down, you've been there, done that, got the whole darn t-shirt, prove it. I am ready to take this thing on all day, every day. All right, so emergency condition, condition your brain, be ready for those emergencies. And then lastly, from that, because you did a whole movie, you wrote the script, have a plan. Have a plan. Run the plan by a few people. Yeah, get, ask a few experts if you have to. I've got this plan. Is this plan sound? And then be ready for another plans. Because I love that quote by Mike Tyson, everyone's got a plan until you get punched in the mouth. Yeah, be ready for plan B and plan C. So have more than one plan. What is your plan? Okay, I visualize Captain falling in the pool. I am not want to go in there after him. I could slip, I could fall, I could hit my head on the side. But yeah, he could pull me in. He's trying to grab me and use me to get out of that water because he's panicking. He pulls me in. And now I'm one of those inadvertent drowning statistics. And I don't want to be that. Have a plan. So in my house, I have a plan. We got a big old long pole. We got a hook on the end of that pole. We have all sorts of plans in place for a potential drowning. We have plans for in case the captain runs away. Yeah, I, I visualize it in my head. It's happened to me already. So therefore, I'm gonna draw back on that experience. Dog fights, yeah, captain's been in a dog fight or two. He does, I mean, we call it white tail rising. You've seen that white tail of his, don't mess with his tail. Mess with his tail, we're gonna have a dog fight. I've been there. And I've certainly been attacked multiple times by dogs and survived those. I have a plan, and then another plan, and then another plan. But no more than that. Keep it simple, stupid rule. Remember, 70% is good enough in a lot of these situations. You don't have to have a perfect plan. Because now all of a sudden you're doing, you're on step five of a step seven perfect plan, and step six is not there. Then you panic. Now your own darn pan, plan caused you to panic. No, just go for seven. Get it done. Okay, guys, so that's it for today. And that's probably a good lesson on a Monday because typically Mondays are manic, meaning panic Mondays. So I thought I'd just throw that out there today. But I'm going to continue on with this mini series, hopefully, probably for about the rest of this week because uh, there's many lessons that you can pull from survival situations. Help your own life. I mean, what good is all the stuff about training dogs if you're killed? If you get seriously injured? Yeah, what's your dog gonna do now? What's Captain gonna do if he doesn't have Brian throw the ball for him? Do things for him, feed him. What's he gonna do? Think about that. Again, a lot of people counting on you. So always do these things. Practice that combat breathing. I wanna hear about you breathing that thing today. Do it, do it. Do it about 10 times a day. Four seconds in, four seconds out. Visualize it, play a movie in your head. Your worst case scenario, the one that you think could happen to you the most. You don't have a pull, then you don't need to work on the pull movie. And then lastly, give me two plans. Give me two plans at least. Have plans. 
Guys, do that. Follow the other rules I've been covering. Write these things down. Watch these videos multiple times. Make sure your whole family understands these rules. Because I'm here to tell you, in many situations in my life, I am a lucky man to still be standing here. I cannot tell you how many times I should have been a god. I it just should have. I should be long dead. But I follow these rules. I follow these plans. And if they got me out of some really bad situations, they'll do the same for you. I went from near death to close calls. And that works for me. Okay, guys, so get after it. You got your homework. Make it happen, buddy. Stay alive. Stay safe. See you tomorrow.